smell some YouTube. Do you smell that? Do you smell that? Mm. Huh. Something smells fishy. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a fish market for all of your city building needs. In Minecraft, the reason that you guys are seeing this video is because down there in the comments, I read a few of you guys wanted to see a fish market. Thank you so much for leaving that suggestion, everybody. I appreciate all of you very, very much, and hopefully a couple of you should be seeing yourselves on the screen right now. Thank you so much for leaving the suggestion and keeping the City Builds playlist alive. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. You guys are so great. Thank you so, 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 so much. And of course, that leads me on to, if you do want to see something specific, leave a comment down below. I might actually make it. Well, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I think we should probably get this one started. Let's do this thing. Side note, is anybody else creeped out by the look of dead fish? I really don't like it. There's something about the eyes. So just before we start building, ladies and gentlemen, here are all of the materials that we are going to need to make our fish market. As you can see, those are a lot of materials. So please do make sure that you have access to all of those and make sure that you can get enough of them as well. The amount of ground space required to make the market is covered by this white concrete grid. It is a 14 by 16 block area which you are more than welcome to make and encouraged to make if you are building and planning out a city. And that's it. Please pause the video if you have to. Gather those materials. Make sure you've got enough room to make it. Make sure you know where you want to make it and once you're ready we can begin. Step one my fishy friends come all the way to the front left hand corner of the grid. If you've not made the grid, it isn't a big deal. We're going to be starting this build very soon. From this front left corner of the grid, count backwards, one, two, three. This is the starting position. Place six blue concrete on top of this block. One, two, three, four, five, six. Add another row behind it. I then want you to take the top two blocks of that row and extend them backwards each by 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the one on top as well. I then want you to take the last two blocks and connect them down to the ground. This will give you a shape which should look nice and symmetrical. What you can also do whilst we're here is use white concrete and you can place a rectangular shape layer of white concrete directly inside of the shape that we have made. This layer of white concrete will sit inside and around the rectangle shape that we have just made. I want to add two windows to this shape. I'm going to use two rows of two glass coming in from both sides. In between the glass there will be white concrete, so two windows like this and white concrete in between. Very simple indeed. Come to the back of the build and take the top corner of the back of the build and extend it across by 13 using blue concrete. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. To which you then want to connect down to the ground. You want to add another row inside of that row. And a row coming along the top underneath the main row. What we then want to do with this 13th row that we have created is that we want to also place a rectangular row of white concrete inside of the empty space. This row will actually connect to the other row that we made earlier and it will form a nice little corner shape like this. And we of course want the white concrete to come along the bottom and on this occasion to... Oh! I'm glad that we did this. We also have to add another row of blue concrete as well on the right side to balance it out. But I'm glad that we placed the white concrete first. So we just have to seal that up too. 
which will give us this nice empty canvas. And we're going to have the same set of windows that we did on the opposite side. We're going to have two rows of glass coming in from both sides, the left and the right. And in between those, we're just going to seal it up. Feel free to make this a lot fancier by adding some stairs and stuff around the windows. I'm quite happy with the nice modern simple building. Come along to the right side. And the right side is actually a little bit boring in comparison to the other two. First of all, we want to take the top corner of the right side and we want to extend it forwards by 12 using blue concrete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're then going to connect it all the way down to the ground. We're going to add a row of blue concrete on the inside of this left side. And once again, I know that we are doing this ever so slightly out of sequence, but we're going to use white concrete to form a rectangular shape inside of this empty space which will connect it all the way to this corner and we're then going to extend it across from the top as well just to create the same rectangular shape that we placed earlier and we're now going to add the two additional rows of blue concrete one on the right side I, I don't know why I just wanted to seal that up first and then one coming along the top which will give us this empty space right here. But it just so happens that this is where, like, the counter space and stuff is. So I'm opting to just fill this in using white concrete. I don't really want to add any windows or anything like that. Now that we've done that, we have made three out of the four walls of our fish market. Now, once we have achieved this, it's time for us to add some additional details, I think. So... On the right side here, in front of this row of white concrete, I want you to place a row of four quartz block directly in front of the white concrete, like this. I want you to take the bottom block of quartz here and extend it left by six using upside down quartz stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're then going to place a row of four quartz blocks coming up left from the bottom of the window. We're going to place two rows of glass pane on top of the upside down stairs. We will then seal up the top of the window using... Hmm, what do we want to use? We'll just use quartz again, just, uh, just for the sake of continuity. So, we'll just seal up the top of the window with quartz, although we're not going to be seeing the top of the window anyway. Right, so, underneath the window as well, whilst we're here and whilst it's easy, I want you to destroy underneath the stairs and replace it with blue concrete. Because you can see it, and it makes quite a nice contrast, actually. Directly left of the entranceway, we are going to place a row of four white concrete coming up from the ground, extend left, and then connect down. And that is where a double door is going to be. We can more f so focus on a lot of the door later on, like actually adding the doors and the glass and stuff. But for now, I want you to take the top of the doorway and I want you to place an upside down quartz stairs in front of the top left corner of the door in front of the top right corner of the door. And now that we have those two corners stereified, I want you to place quartz slabs along the top of them to connect together and underneath to connect together as well. And it makes kind of something, it kind of looks like a sign. Well, now that we have made the sign, I want you to grab acacia wood slabs. And on top of the left corner of the doorway, this white concrete block here, I want you to place two acacia planks, one, two, add an additional slab on top so that it's a little bit higher, extend it all the way to the right, and then connect it down to the opposite side, right here. And then behind all of this, I want you to use a row of, well, two rows of blue concrete to fill in the back part of the sign like this and it's just quite a pleasing set of like depth and it's an interesting set of sizes like you can see just like how everything kind of like melds in together it's like quite nice to look at now that we have done that 
I think it's important for us to place going right of the sign at the top of the door, not the larger sign, across the top of the window. We're going to place alternating light blue wool and white wool. Light blue wool, white wool. Light blue wool, white wool. Light blue wool, white wool. Like this. I would also like it if there were carpet in front of these. To place carpet, you need string. So I'm going to place a series of string below and in front of the colored carpets. And we're just going to swap out for those in a second. So the string wants to be placed in such a way that it is in front of and just below the set of walls. And the reason for that is if we grab ourselves the white carpet and the light blue carpet and we place the relevant one of each in front, it kind of looks as though that the canopy is hanging down. It's, it's just a nice little effect, I think. Now that we have done that, ladies and gentlemen, we are making really good progress. We're going to grab the smooth stone. I'm going to delete all of the grass inside of the build. That's in front of the build, and literally I'm going to re-floor the build. And I want to use stone. Fish markets strike me, in my mind, as a place that would have a stone floor. They, they in my mind, are kind of like an older sort of shop. So we're going for kind of like an older sort of floor material. Whilst the exterior is a little bit more modern, I do definitely think that stone, or smooth stone in this case, is a little bit better a fit. But, if I'm wrong, feel free to refloor the area. You may use spruce wood, oak wood planks, you may use quartz, you can use block of iron, you can use acacia if you want, that'd be a... Ooh, I don't know about acacia, but you could use it if you wanted to. There's something about that orange floor that I don't, I don't know about that, but you are more than welcome to give that one a go if you so do choose. But we want to have something which should look like this, which doesn't look too bad, does it? Well, I think that now that we've reached this point, I would like to work on the inside just a little bit. So, once we're inside of the shop, I just want to add in some counter space and stuff. So, let's say we've came inside and we want to look towards the right wall. We want to leave a gap of two in the, from the back corner and coming out of this block, place five blue concrete. One, two, three, four, five. Gap of one, blue concrete, connect it here towards the front window. We are going to also, whilst we're in here, place a quartz stairs specifically in this position here. And what else can we do with the materials that we have? Not too many, but I'm just going to get rid of a lot of these. And I'm going to grab the roofing materials. I'm using block of iron and sea lantern because they strike me as kind of like an older fashioned sort of... Um, sort of like ceiling material and I'm gonna place block of iron coming across the top of our fish market just above the windows now you could even make it a little bit higher and you could actually have this as the roof as well like if you wanted to like you could have it just a bit higher but I I'm quite happy with just a free blocks gap for my ceiling I'm quite comfortable with three. Two is a little bit claustrophobic, you know, you need a little bit of breathing space, but three is actually kind of, I find, to be the perfect amount, unless you're going for a particularly high ceiling effect. We also, of course, have to place some sea lanterns in the ceiling just for light, so we'll start off by placing them, say, we'll come in from the corners diagonally by three either side so like you take the corner one two and then the third block you place a sea lantern so like corner corner here it really doesn't matter what sort of system you devise but if you place it like that you'll find that the lighting is quite even if you take each corner and just count diagonally inwards by three you should find that the lighting is quite uh, you know it's just set out in a nice way if you keep it even on all sides well, now that we're also in here, I'm going to use a little bit of white glass paint, some light blue stained glass, 
I'm going to use a little bit of spruce trap door as well for this part. I want to place some light, uh, some white stained glass pane along this left side here. And along the inside of this counter, I want to have where the fish are going to be. So I'm going to have some light blue glass. The light blue glass is supposed to represent ice. So I'm also, I might even add another row of ice in like along this back corner here. But I d uh, we're not going to be able to place the trap doors, so what about if I do that? Still kind of can't place them, but I want to have it so that I've got kind of like a enough, uh, enough of an area to... Uh, maybe I could just turn this block here into kind of like... Yeah, I, I can just turn that into a corner, but I want to have a couple of rows of eyes. And I want to have fish on there as well, so I want to have like little signs, right? And I want to use like white carpet and maybe even some like cyan carpet as well. And you know if you've ever been to, like even if you've not necessarily been to a fish market, but if you've been to a supermarket and you've went to like the fish counter or the meat counter, like sometimes you see there's fish on ice, isn't there? And uh, I'm just using a little bit of uh, a little bit of white carpet to represent some packed ice because if we use real ice it'll actually melt and I'm just using some uh, cyan carpet because it kind of sort of looks like fish and I'm just gonna have a couple of signs planted out and in these signs you would actually have something say like I don't know cod right you'd like write out the fish that's on for sale I don't know that many fish, I'm going to be honest, I'm not really a fish eater. And then you'd have like, you know, two pound or whatever it might be, or two dollars, or, you know, whatever the price of fish is, again, I don't eat the stuff, um, then you would put it along here. And what we can also do is we can place some uh, item frames along the top here with uh, <laughs> item frames in that item frame section. And you can just have some more signs telling you how much each fish is going to be and the fish are just like packed into here and if you wanted to of course as well you know you can add a couple of chests so like the chest could be like to store the fish in that you're selling you could even add a couple behind the counter as well if you wanted to you could add a little bit more like carpet and stuff for decoration like along the counter if you wanted to you could say add a little bit of like i kind of like this as decoration i like to add acacia pressure plates and i like to add pressure plates in general like along countertops and stuff it just makes it look a little bit fancier and if you wanted to you could even have like special deals of fish like on the wall say like you could have a couple of item frames here and you could like put some oak signs next to them and you could have like whatever the deal of the day is on fish you know I I'll write in these and I'll show you later just as some examples but you know just place them as little placeholders now because we don't even have the fish on us at the moment now along this back wall I like the idea of having a little bench to kind of sit down and contemplate. Whenever I've been to a butcher's and stuff, and shops that are sort of similar, there's always a weird bench and seating area inside these places. I really don't know why. It's not just the places I've been to, is it? It can't be. Well, I'm also going to want to refloor the area a little bit. That's going to require a bit of white carpet, and we don't have it on us, but it'll be in the item list, certainly will be. It's some blue carpet. And I'm just going to lighten up the area by placing a little bit of white carpet, blue carpet around the counter space. Now this is going to provide a little bit of colour and I might even place it, mm, we kind of, we kind of can't really place that much of it. Oh no, yes we can, yes we can, we haven't ruined it. We can have just a little bit of it, a bit of it like connecting back into this counter space as well. Uh, if you want to, it might be nice to add maybe like a, a lantern, a sea lantern hanging from here. It's not called a sea lantern, but that it's actually called that unless they fixed it. Yeah, it's still a sea lantern. You could have like a sea lantern, quotes around sea lantern, and you could have like a painting in this back corner too. Again, all of this will be uh, in the description uh, or in the, in the list at the start, but uh, you know, something like that. Might look a, a little bit nice, keep the area a little bit bright. We could have a couple of potted plants. Now, potted plants I always make in the same sort of way. Um, potted plants I al almost always do this. I like a little bit of glazed terracotta. 
So we'd want one that kind of fits the fee feel here. So maybe a little bit of orange or a little bit of blue. Let's go blue. And then we'd want some sort of leaves as well. Now, I haven't actually used these leaves right here, jungle leaves, the new ones. But they have. Oh, no, they don't. Do they not have yellow in them? Oh, Oh well, well jungle leaves are fine anyway. A little bit of blue and some jungle leaves, kind of just in the corner, just to kind of keep things nice and bright. Late, whoops, later on when we actually like come back inside here, we'll place fish inside the item frames and what have you and it'll look really, really fancy. But for now, I think that we're quite done. The only thing that I also want to do inside here, and I didn't have room for it, is I want to place a little bit of black glass above the doorway, like this. I'm going to also provide, now this, this is controversial, you can either use iron doors and acacia pressure plates for the door, so like in front of and behind, you can use that in front of and behind the door if you're not a fan of doorways, or a, a material that we do kind of use is we use a little bit of oak and spruce in the build, so you can kind of use whatever sort of door you want. The only annoyance I have with these two, and you're going to see later, is it's going to flip the sign open every time you walk in. Anyway, now that we've done that, we can work on the outside of the build a little bit more. We're not really going to need the door and stuff uh, too much more. So, what are we going to need for the outside of the build beyond here, ladies and gentlemen? Well, we're going to need some... Like, like, I'll tell you what, let me dump that. We need some spruce wood stairs for this. We'll need some spruce wood slab. We need a little bit of light blue carpet. We need some cyan carpet. We're going to need a bit of white carpet as well. We're going to use a little bit of chest. We're going to use some signs, some oak signs or any sign you want. We're going to use some item frames. And we are going to be using some other things as well. We'll be using like black concrete and the trap doors and stuff. So outside of your fish market, I'm going to recommend that we have a couple of tables selling some of the fish. So the way that we do this is we take the left corner of this window where we have the quartz block and you want to leave a gap of one, two, and on this third block here we actually want to have an upside down spruce wood stairs with a spruce wood slab coming across from it and an upside down stair next to it. You want to leave a gap of two, and then you want to do the same thing. You want to have the upside down spruce stairs, spruce wood slab, and then an upside down spruce wood stairs on the opposite end. I'm just going to place some chests next to these tables. And then I'm going to place some like light blue carpet, cyan carpet, and white carpet on top of the tables to kind of represent fish. And then on the tables themselves, I like the idea of having maybe an item frame or two. Probably just one actually, just like in the middle. And I like the idea of just having a sign. And again, like, I don't know what sort of fish you'd say. Gold, goldfish? Do people eat those? Well, I'm like, no, no one actually eats goldfish. I'm just messing around. I, uh, maybe somebody does. I don't know. But uh, maybe if you, you you like goldfish, if you eat goldfish, I never would. But hey, I'm not going to judge you. Then we can have, like, you know, just fish, like, sold and signed out on the signs. Additionally, above the entrance, the reason that we have this kind of sign here is I like the idea of having some fish advertised above the door as well. So I quite like that. So item frames and signs like above the door. Plenty of advertising. A cool thing that I like to do, and you'll have seen this in quite a few videos, I like this decoration for shops. I like to use these things right here so what you do is you place one block off the ground a black concrete underneath it spruce fence gates you place spruce trap doors coming up the left and right side of the contraption that we have just made like this right and you also chuck spruce trap doors on top you chuck an item frame in front of it and it just looks like one of those old-fashioned signs, right? And those old-fashioned signs that have like, you know, the it's just like a chalkboard pretty much and it just has whatever you're trying to sell in it. So I'm going to get rid of all of these materials, ladies and gentlemen, because believe it or not, we have actually done most of the shot. We're just missing a couple of key features. The first thing I want to do is add fish because it will really make a big difference to the build. 
So, I want to go around and I want to add fish to all of the signs. Now, it's completely up to you what pattern you use for the fish, and I wish I could find them right now. Here we go. So, you've got quite a few, so I'm going to go with the raw fish. We're going to go raw cod, raw salmon, tropical fish, and puffer fish. And we're just going to use these in all of the item frames, and you'll see how the build actually, like, it just, it really lights up now. Like, it really does make quite a bit of difference. And you'll see my dislike of these pressure plates as well as we walk past this line when we come back out. But uh, we're going to use these in all of the item frames. You can use them in a random pattern. I'm kind of doing it a bit random. Maybe, what about like this? And then I'll reverse reverse that and maybe like just that again. And I'm just placing those in all the signs. And it does just make, how did you get there? It does just make such a huge difference. Like, it really does. Like, it really brightens the build up a little bit. It really makes it a little bit better looking. And then as we come out, you're going to see my issue. Right? Right? Yeah, I, I, I hate that so much. So, again, you might want to go with perhaps a switch on this side to operate the door. These look better. It depends how much it's going to drive you crazy. It really does drive me crazy. So, now we've got most of the build done. It looks like a pretty good fish market, if I do say so myself. But, all we're going to do from here is the sign. You guys know this. My least favourite part. So, to make the sign, we need crafting table. We're going to need four banners. Only four. If only I knew where they were. They're blue. And they're bold. And they're strong. And they let everybody know what's in here. One, two, three, four. You need four blue banners. Again, all of this will be in the item list. It's just I didn't have room for everything. And a huge stack of white dye. Chuck a crafting table on the ground. Crack it open. And I would highly recommend moving the blue banners and the dye all the way up to the top left-hand corner-ish of your inventory. We are now going to chuck our first banner, which is blank right in the middle, with white dye coming up the left side of the banner. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table, with white dye coming along the top. Grab the new banner and place it in the top middle of the table, with white dye coming along the middle. And that's F, easy as that. I is my favourite letter to make, because you place a blue banner in the middle left of the table, with white dye coming up the middle. And that's all you have to do. So that's I. We have FI. Now we're going to make S, which is a blue banner in the middle of the table. White dye along the bottom. Grab the new banner. Place it in the middle of the table. White dye coming along the top. Grab the new banner. And this is how you differentiate. So you can either make an S or a Z or a Z for my American brothers over there. Middle left of the table. White die coming top left corner to bottom right corner. If you want a Z, you do the opposite. So, F-I-S. All we have to do is H. So, blue banner in the middle, middle of the table. White die coming along the left side. Grab the new banner. Place it in the middle of the table. You opposite it. So, white die coming along the right side. You grab the new banner. Place it in the top middle or bottom middle of the table. Doesn't really matter too much. And you place white die coming along the middle. And there you have fish. So, fish is going to be placed directly in the center of the sign. It's no mistake that there is only two gaps in between the blue around the acacia. The F is to be placed where the first light blue wool is, I-S-H. And you will find it is placed perfectly in the center of the sign, almost as if some lunatic, i.e. me, designed it that way. And in doing that, you have actually fully completed your fish market, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very proud of you. We've done a really good job with this one. It looks really, really cool. It looks, it feels nice. It's like it got a nice modern feel, but also kind of like an old sort of styly build. Let's take a look at this thing. Let's get rid of all this mess. Let me probably write some stuff in the signs, and then we can admire this build for all of its glory. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is our fish market 100% fully completed. We have a couple of stands that we can use to sell fish outside. We have an advertising board thingy, whatever you'd call that. We have four signs above the door. We have a very clear sign that lets us know what is actually for sale inside the shop. As we go around the shop, you'll notice that we have a nice, sleek, simple, modern design. You're more than welcome to spruce this up a little bit if you like. As we head inside of the store, plop, plop, 
you'll notice that we have all of the fish assigned and how much they all cost. We have a nice big area where they are all stored on ice behind the counter. You can come round and have a look if you like. You've got a place to pay. You have a cash register. You even have a nice little place to sit and contemplate and think to yourself, what fish would I like? Would I like that spiky one or would I like that one that kind of reminds me of Nemo that makes me sad? I don't know. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is the build complete. I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. If you're new around here and you're building a city and you want to see some city builds in the future, subscribe and click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. And of course, if you want something specific made, leave a suggestion. I actually made this because somebody left a suggestion to make a fish market. And well, but here we are. It's crazy how those things work out. And not only that, if you would like to make any more of my city builds, feel free to check out the card system. The description below, and I'll even leave a link at the top of the comments to my city builds playlist. We don't just make one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, 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 no. We make fish markets. We make Dunkin' Donuts. We make huge baseball fields, which are really easy to make. We, ha we have, like, Denny's. We have diners. We have donut shops. We have parks. We have hotels, convenience stores, game shops. The list goes on. I should probably do another tour of this place, shouldn't I? I mean, really, it's, it's probably about time. We've, we've done some cool builds since the last one. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's all in the card system, the description below, and the top of the comment section. I'll leave it pinned just so that you guys can find it easy enough. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm going to leap myself off this hotel. I could not thank you enough for all of the support that you guys have been giving me throughout these videos that have been keeping this City Builds playlist alive. I love you all very, very much, and I appreciate your loads and loads loads. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!